You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Yeah, man, they don't fucking clean up their parking lot. You expect me to go outside and smoke <laughs> when you don't have a fucking... Yeah, we have... <laughs> I don't, don't want to get ahead of myself. You want armed security everywhere now. Yeah, we have cops at shows where if there's no problems, but then you hit yet another night off shithole motel. This is not a bad motel. We have uh, our night off in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Why? Because we thought we were going to play the thirsty hippo in Hattiesburg. We're going to fill an off night with a paying but, gig. Pop yeah. Up. We were going to do a pop up. Well, we well, no, no, it, no, no. Hennigan was trying to book oh, this. Oh, I go, you guys all right. were trying to do it. Yeah, yeah. that's a, it's a five hour drive, which is kind of a hump, but it actually went well. But what was the podcast that you you turned on and made the drive go so fucking quick? What? Uh, oh, uh, let me look it up. I just found it because I, yeah, I knew you guys like whittle death and murder and stuff. Last day, last day. Yeah. That was really interesting. Harris Whittle is a comedian that died of an overdose and his sister has a new podcast called last day and it's about death and shit that kills people and it's really good well, really interesting she set it up for like this this chunk that we're it's four episodes in this chunk is opioid epidemic yeah. and how it, and then how it's touched just about everyone. In the yeah, and, uh, so Sarah Silverman people. and Aziz Ansari on the first episode yep. talking about her brother. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a pet peeve with uh, Netflix documentaries with me where you go, oh, this sounds like an interesting story, but the documentarian, it makes it all about them. Yeah. She doesn't do that. <laughs> she does, you know, where, where, oh, it's his sister talking about it, and then it's going to be about... But it's not. It's fucking really good. Uh, she's a she's a natural talent, and uh, yeah, made five hours blow by to our off night in Hattiesburg. Yeah, no, I, I liked it. I could tell that her point was she was she said early on that she's like this is to make people who've been through this feel less alone, and you could that actually comes through as opposed to just saying it and then making it about and you. And that there's a, about how widespread, like there were more people who died of addiction since '99. Than like car accidents or yeah. something. Something stupid. Yeah, and that doesn't what? count. Yeah, no, I think that is opioid. Yeah. Or, yeah. Because yeah, that doesn't count smoking and drinking. <laughs> yeah, the, the numbers go through the roof with that. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's, but I think the point she was trying to make is that, that this touches everyone. Like, mm-hmm. I, I mean, there's not a person that, that, like, six degrees of Kevin Bacon kind of thing. Like it's like the one uh, it, degree of or two degrees, you you'll find someone that you know. It oh, yeah. touches us right here, at the fucking <laughs> Howard Johnson's in Hattiesburg, where we're we're kind of shut in because there's some fucking like I, I wish there was a, I had a cop friend who could park his car next to us a in the cruiser, parking lot. A cruiser in the lot. <laughs> Yeah, this is the, the last place. When we left you last, we were at a piece of shit hotel, uh, motel. It was the Econo Lodge East in Knoxville, Tennessee. If you're in for waffles and moonshine and a place to lay your head, I got a one-stop shopping. We were so excited to get smoking rooms where we could just back the van up to the door. The van, which, by the way, we never mentioned. The van, which I got brand new for this tour fucking like the second week in cleveland someone fucking smashed into it left their pulled their bumper off dragging it out of the side of our van i mean i i could see like if a if a a ship captain is coming into port (laughs) and he gets it a little too close to the to the the dock there and the momentum of a ship it's just gonna go it's great someone basically Came up too close to the vehicle and scraped a bumper. Like a side panel kind of From the back, bumper. the rear of the back door, 
to the almost the middle of the front door. So they just kept going, and they all they do is tap. The I brakes. remember walking out to go get Taco Bell breakfast for everyone, and uh, some ladies in the. I see the bumper right <laughs> next to the car, and she goes, "Wow, someone fucked up." Or I go, well, "It's not from my car. That's all I care about." I didn't notice the giant <laughs> gouge down the side. That oh, it is from my car. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, like you would think that if you realize you're hitting a car, because the scrape is like two and a half feet long, at least. Yeah, yeah, you would think that you would at least like. It looks like someone sped it was up a, halfway through it the was, scrape. Well, yeah, it's called a getaway. <laughs> there was enough. There, it was enough of a of a connection that it ripped their fucking bumper off. I know it was it was like one of those uh, uh, like plexiglass well, or whatever. It wasn't metal because I rem- I picked it up it was, and I threw oh, it over oh, it the fuck. A, it wasn't a she- 1955 Chevy fully chrome bumper that you. <laughs> I, I'm saying it was light enough that I picked it up and hurled it over the fence that yeah. guards the dumpster. I always love when they put up a giant chain link fence like you're gonna uh, steal from their dumpster. Yet the uh, everything else is unguarded. You can get in the hotel without a key and walk down the hallways, but don't fuck with our dumpster. Uh, anyway, so yeah, last we left you at the uh, Econo Lodge East Knoxville, we were all glad. We were making such hay with the pictures on Twitter of the 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 grill chained to the fucking post and the <laughs> cigarette burns and the blood stains and the crushed <laughs> roaches on the wall but we were just still happy to smoke and then the aftermath of that last podcast if you followed my twitter was uh yeah me showing pictures of bed bug bites all <laughs> over my back with which Tracy got too and uh and everyone's going, why don't you spend more on fucking hotels, you cheap prick? Because we could smoke in that fucking hotel, and I'd go back to that hotel today. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was convenient to have a liquor store right next door. I'd spray it down with Raid before I slept in the bed. <laughs> I, I actually slept in my clothes till about 3 or 4 in the morning. Oh, I did that. got too really? hot, yeah. I so. did that in Nashville. I was very pickled, and I, uh, I slept in my full suit and tie. I kept waking up to make sure my tie clip was still on because I didn't want to lose it in the bed. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Why were there so many scuff marks on the walls of our rooms? That's what I wanted. I want to know the story behind every scuff mark at the (laughs) Econolodge. Well, there was no blood splatter like there was in Cleveland. Oh, that was that was terrifying. I but, think we talked about that. I, I think did we talk about it on yeah. the podcast? Okay, good. Yeah, because that was oh weird. on the ceilings, the, ceilings. the cast off. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cast off pattern. Yeah, uh, but I like I what? Who is in there? Like, how do you get? Like, it was like furniture scuff marks. It wasn't just like someone. I'm bothered by this. I want to know who is in there moving furniture and why. And there was like years of scuff marks. <laughs> Hey man. Does anybody have a theory at all? I have <laughs> Jaylee, you have no all the answers. Idea. Maybe they used to clean underneath the dresser. <laughs> <laughs> but there were scuff marks where there wasn't even any furniture. Yeah, like, yeah. How do you get a scuff mark eight feet up the wall? Someone trying to get away. <laughs> <laughs> a failed escape attempt. <laughs> Tracy's had to get uh, like calamine lotion and wait, did you get prescription shit for that? No, no, that's lidocaine. lidocaine. Doesn't right. work. Doesn't work. Because mine don't itch. What, what, what's weird is that's several days ago, and I I saw the the bites the next day, and uh, that's when I sent the picture out on the Twitter. And uh, just tonight, I had to pull up my shirt and ask Olivia, "Hey, those bite marks still there?" She goes, "Oh yeah." And it's weird that I haven't taken my shirt off in four days to shower, to do anything. Yeah, yeah, you know, you you look like you went paintballing. They're like (laughs) (laughs) and lost, and lost. (laughs) Yeah, but they don't. Mine don't itch, but it's probably because I don't know the layers of filth on my skin. I don't know. Uh, Maybe yeah, maybe it snuffed them out. But every time we talk about him, I start scratching my head. My my scalp itches, so uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's bed bugs. I think you got bit by something, but I don't think it's bed bugs. I have no. Well, what else bites you? Well, Skeeters? A dog. A dog can bite you. Anything yeah, well, bite now you. I know from Nashville, sleep in your suit. <laughs> <laughs> 
whatever stops people from hugging you. I'm just gaining more and more maladies. <laughs> fucking chalasians and fucking bug bites. Doug will be at the merch booth tonight, but because of his leprosy, he's not he's not <laughs> letting you hug him. Oh, uh, Chattanooga. Hopefully if they were bed bugs, I spread actually no, I was gonna shit on the hotel, but the oh that's what I was gonna say. The Econo Lodge East in Knoxville. I haven't done it yet. And I don't know how to upload pictures real well, but I, I want I'm gonna Yelp review the fuck out of that. TripAdvisor Expedia, five star reviews. I'm just gonna send I'm just gonna hype that place. What? Yeah, so people stay there. Oh. Get a smoking room. They're the best. <laughs> I mean, any. I mean, we stay there because we have an ulterior motive, and that's to smoke in the room, the podcast, and we can live low. Anyone Which else we're you, doing right here at no the one, Howard people, Johnson's in uh, Hattiesburg, only because a it's scary. It's a nice room, really nice rooms yeah, for yeah. like fifty five, sixty bucks or something. Uh, yeah, it's a really nice room. And when they made me initial for the no smoking here. It's only a hundred dollar charge. I'm like, fuck, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pay that. I would have, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's your fault for charging so little and for making a dangerous parking lot. There's like five or six people. Actually, they keep coming in and out. There's a U-Haul yeah, parked the out there, and it. it's sketchy you as fuck. They've, they've set up like right out in front of our room. We can't go straight to the highway from here. We have to go all the way around the back because they set up like highway barriers that they fill up with water so you can't move them that's what's right there so yeah i know between so two parts of the parking but it's lot so that you can't just whip in one way you have to go the long way and to get to this side so that makes me think that maybe there was some sketchiness well here's the, past, the thing before they put a fresh coat of paint on it i almost i thought about calling the cops on the non-emergency line and go, hey, can you do a drive through and fucking scare some of these fucking people away? And it's weird where you're like someone who's very pro drug, but anti the people who sell them out of fucking parking lots. But then I thought, I mean, there's as many fucking chicks in that coming and going and maybe they're hookers. And it's like I remember where you go, oh. I, my, my my mother would make jokes about I'm gonna have to sell my ass and I go like you're fucking like a 55 year old fucking hacking smoker you're like who's gonna but then you you realize you watch cops and stuff and, <laughs> and then you see the bedraggled toothless women that are actually getting customers what are you doing doing in the car why was your head in his lap I don't know I just I'm, I'm on my way home yeah most hookers don't become hookers because they look like Jennifer Lopez like <laughs> <laughs> But I'm saying, dude, like these gals, I don't know what's going on out there. I'm fucking. There pat- was one gal out with in her underpants. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, uh, and I just kept walking. Don't look. Just go to the fucking door. There's definitely some something sort of unsavory going on because you you had your door barred so we could all kind of go between rooms and things like that. And some guy was actually floating outside of your like, room, like literally out right, right at the door. door for no. He there was no reason he should have been there, and I think it was because it was like open a crack. And as soon as I poked my head out to see if my Grubhub lady was here, who she, by the way also crazy as fuck. Uh, <laughs> And she wasn't there, but as soon as I came out, he walked away, and that's when I came over and told you about him because it was too weird. He was really like seeing scoping out. I don't. I didn't want anything to happen to you, Doug. I, I love you. I, 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 I like that Chaley carries his podcast gear in what looks like a handgun case. Yeah, yeah, it does. But none of us look like we're packing or you, could handle a gun yeah. yeah you guys all look like a band and i look like the manager or the roadie more the roadie i guess <laughs> no, no you don't look like a roadie yeah. well i'm in fucking pajamas and a work shirt i, I haven't don't know. seen a single person in hattiesburg besides you guys that didn't seem like they were on crystal meth <laughs> oh my god don't get ahead of me <laughs> Oh, la- fuck it. Let's just last night in Huntsville. Oh, yeah. Stand up live in Huntsville. Fucking good club. Great yeah. time. Same owners as the uh, Zanies in Nashville. You know, it's weird. I've never been to Huntsville, but the sound guy says, hey, it's good to work with you again. The big guy in yeah, the double breasted. Tom, Tom knows you uh, through the podcast. That's why he's wearing that. Like double breasted sea captains. Yeah. Uh, oh, I didn't jacket. know that. I thought it was yeah, just his I, look. He was, he was a great guy. And uh, 
Very but he said it again as though we've worked I together think, before. Yeah, he's he's friends with Carlos Valencia and a, a bunch of other comics that that right. are in those circles. And uh, he, it may have been a thing where he saw you at one of the shows, or you know, he could have been up right. in, at Nashville in, at Zanies or something. So. But they had a they had a, a a uniformed cop working there, like uniform over uniformed, both venues, yeah. like full a bulletproof vest, yeah, bulletproof vest pack. with sh- the shit hanging off the front and mm-hmm. fucking. Flashbang grenades. <laughs> what the fuck he had? <laughs> it was it was overkill for the, and the first show, there was two shows, and the first show was the dry bar comedy show. It's like a, a we don't drink show. You need a cop with fucking tasers and stuff. Oh, I don't think he was there for that. Well, he may have been. Oh, oh I, no, he was. He was. Yeah, because. Uh, they 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 ran a little long, so when, when we got there, the show was still going on. Yeah, he was there. Yeah, that's weird. It's very strange. He was cool as shit. He was awesome. Uh, I liked him a lot. What was his name? Brandon. Brandon yeah, uh, and it's funny because after the show, like he's a private duty at that point, just uniformed security, uh, but cop uniformed. He's got a taser and a fucking and he. Gun. W- yeah, he's walking me around from the side smoking exit from the green room to the front where we're selling merch outside, which we did both at Nashville. It's so funny when you sell merch outside on a sidewalk. It looks like a fucking late night yard sale. <laughs> uh, and he's walking me around and we're going by a parked car and the cop goes on one side. And this guy, an older dude, he's had to be in his 40s in a polo shirt. Or a button-down shirt. He looked like, and he goes, "Hey, hey, hey! I hate to ask you this, but here, here, will you sign my bindle of meth?" <laughs> and I, pointing through the parked car at the cop that's right there, I On go, the "Other side no, of the cruiser." No, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah, because when you're holding it to sign it, you are in possession of meth. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to put my name on your meth. <laughs> Hey, can I use your license to <laughs> chop this up? <laughs> Who's this Doug Stanhope fellow, the dumbest drug dealer ever? <laughs> Is he new in the biz? Puts his phone number on there. <laughs> phone number? <laughs> Got meth. Well, what, what, what else have I signed on this tour? Well, it's really weird. You, uh, we were at, uh, I can't remember where, but the, oh, it was uh, Charlotte Comedy Zone. And a guy came up and he goes, I got four nipples. <laughs> just, just, oh, Jesus. Put your flash on, dude. That. I'll take the picture, but I don't need a story here. And he fucking lifts. I mean, this guy, that's, that's all he does every night. Waits till it gets dark enough to start lifting his shirt. And he, he had like two nipples where they're supposed to be. And then about the width of a hand, there's two more nipples. He's as hairy as a fucking sweater, so it's kind of hard to tell. He could have just had two pieces of band aids on there, but he he did, and uh, you signed that, and that was that was weird. I signed someone's ankle bracelet. That was uh, that was just the other night in Nashville, out on the street. He had he and and once again there was a cop there at Zany's. Oh yeah, you told me that. He was, he was and uh, I didn't even notice like a, or as drunk both. He was pretty subdued, but they but they do have these cops there and I got to say it was Chase and I were talking about it after the first night going, I don't know if that's conducive to comedy, but I'll tell you what, on the second night when we were in uh, Huntsville, boy, uh there wasn't a lot of fucking around when you wanted to get someone out of there. That they oh would, yeah, when you have the yeah you know, the bomb squad cop, <laughs> See, the uh, SWAT team looking guy. The alternative to that is you have the biggest guy on your crew go over and tell that table to shut up, or you know a waiter it works. Or and I'll, I'll, th- another thing I noticed: two of the best rooms we worked were uh, not just the, the the cop last night, but Madison and Huntsville. Both do that thing with the bag for the oh, phones. Yeah. Not Huntsville. It was uh, Nashville. Y- the yonder. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. The cop was Huntsville. Yeah. The, the bag was Nashville and Madison. And yeah, it's a house rule. Comedy on stage. And this is so important for that rule is when a club, you know, makes that you got to put your cell phone in a bag and you get it back later or however well, it works. It's not because I didn't know how it worked either. And I watched. I saw comedy on state because we had two days there in Madison 
And it was fucking seamless. You didn't even know what was going on the first night because I told them, don't say anything to Doug. I want to see I if might go know- ape shit. <laughs> no, I, w- I didn't know how you'd react, but I did. I wanted to see if you even noticed people futzing or going. It was not a fucking problem. They give you the bag when you're walking in. You put your phone in the bag and there's a magnetic lock on there like a like a security thing on a on a tag yeah. on a piece of clothing. You need a magnet to get it off. So you put your your phone on vibrate. You enjoy the show. If something comes up and it vibrates, you go out into the showroom, which you should out of do the in, showroom. out of the showroom, into the lobby. There's someone there to open it. They just put it on the thing. And it opens up, and then you make your phone call, make your text, or do whatever. Mm-hmm. And then and then you go back in when you're ready to. Participate What's in the show. important is the club. That's their rule. Yes. Because uh, what I heard, oh, so and so is doing this now, and. Well, then that makes the comic look like a dick. But if it's a house rule, then, hey, it's out of my hands. There's nothing I can yeah. do. And then everyone's... But it's it's not even as much about recording and taking pictures. It's just people are so accustomed to playing with their fucking I'm phone. Yeah. Checking yeah. in. I'm just going to check in. This bit's boring. I've heard it before or whatever. I'm going to check my tweets. and. Oh, man, yeah. Seeing someone, seeing someone looking at their phone... Even if they're not filming or doing anything disruptive, just seeing the glow on their face makes me Which so resentful. Which you can see from stage because you look you like can't. you're haunting the place. Your face is white. <laughs> yeah, it's, it makes me so resentful and it immediately changes my tone. Charlotte, at, at the Comedy Zone, we were sitting in the back, uh, stage left. So we're like way in the corner. We're usually where the staff sits when they're, they're not busy, right? So there was a guy uh, on the other side of the little wall and he's him and his buddy are sitting there. And I see him just picking up his phone, just doing that thing. It's like he's he's looking at the stage, but then he's got this phone and he's kind of doing this the thing where he's flipping through. And, it's like, <laughs> and you see him and you go down. He's fucking texting like during the show that costs forty five dollars. Mm-hmm. And it's like I'm, I'm pissed at that. But I'm like, but if I go up to him now, he's going to go, oh, OK, text. I go, there's no way he's at some point he's going to go. Oh yeah, I'll just record. So I waited, and I waited, and then finally I see he's gonna videotape you because he's gotten so used to doing that. And I'm right on him with that fucking big bright flashlight. Oh I yes, I remember this. That <laughs> and I so hit weird. the light, and I hit him with the light. Like I tap him on the shoulder, and I go, "Put that away right now!" Like instantly, he barely got his thumb over to record when I'm like, "Get!" And it's like, "Jesus Christ, where did the fucking Batman come from?" <laughs> and that, and that was it. Shut him down. But I, I was, I was talking to Tracy about it later. I go, "If I would have told him, hey, cut it out, texting, it would have just, it, it would have just been, oh, whatever, whatever." But he, I knew he was going to record because everyone, they get so used to that thing. But and point being is that when you put the phone in the bag you can't even look at it you can't see it it goes out of your mind and your focus is on the on the show i think it's probably similar to how once i get on a a plane i don't need to smoke cigarettes like because i know i can't so it's out of my head i'm not going to be able to smoke for the next fucking 14 hours to australia i don't think about it until I land and like, hurry up, customs. I need a fucking cigarette. Oh, my gosh, yeah. But uh, I think it's similar. Absolutely. And what you're talking about is like uh, Chappelle was famous for starting. He did a show or a couple of shows where, where they did that. And I think Yonder has a deal where artists can take them to certain events or like when they're going out on a tour, they'll rent the system and they'll go out and do it. But uh, yeah, if, if if more venues start implementing that I think rule, you're right though, because uh, comedy on state, they said they've had no fucking pushback from it, and uh, Lucy at, at Nashville said the same thing. Said, no, it's great. They do it a little different there. They let everyone walk in with their bag and their phone, so that when they're there early, getting their food or whatever, they can still text and everything, and then they go right on five minutes before they actually start the the pre show stuff. They get they get up there, and someone says, "All right, everyone." Put the phones in the bags. And it's a total honor system. And until someone fucks with it, it works. Yeah. Well, it, and it also, as in the venue's favor, it eliminates the need for this dress down where before exactly. the show, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to have a good time? You can do better than that. You uh, before you have a good time, if we catch you filming, we'll throw you out. If you, you talk to anyone, if, if you yell at the performers, we'll fucking 
staple on your <laughs> eyes shut. <laughs> <laughs> what did that one guy say, Doug? He goes, Doug is very secretive with his performance. Oh, yeah. He blames it on me. Recording. Yeah. He blames it on me. Like other shows, you can just film all you like. But this guy. Yeah, not this fucking Yeah, he, Yeah. He, he's got deep. He's fucking deep throat. He's going to tell you what happened with the Ukraine. And he doesn't want it to be leaked. I do. I like the honor system idea a lot, though, because you're right. If they have the bag and the phone and they're caught filming, they they, they know it's like, I... Oh, should have been in oh, a bag. Wait, I, I don't know if we already talked thoughts. about it. Get him out the fucking door. Oh, totally, it's like yeah. you've, just, you've gone so far out of the way to break a rule that is so easy to follow. No one's saying you have to sit there and you can't, you can't talk it to anyone on your phone out in the lobby. Right. They're saying... Respect the, the the show that's being put on for you. Exactly. There's, there's, yeah. Yeah. For whatever a dozen years that I've had to have different bits trying to stop people from filming. Usually, when you say, "Hey, fucking keep your phone in your pocket," most of the audience applauds because yeah. they're fucking sick of everyone with their phone, even mm. if they're tweeting on the side. Oh my god! <laughs> Omg! I'm right here, third row. You know, it's making me think. Uh, seeing the yonder thing. Uh, like what other things we could do? And I was like, "All right, listen. <laughs> Anyone pulls out their phone and records, no merch. <laughs> Just to throw something out. Or like a dollar more on all beer. <laughs> something that would just yeah. like. Then you'd get everyone be like, "Come on, motherfucker, put your phone away." I'm yeah, like, yeah. Right. Well, then yeah. That, that, I no, I've got. I, I, one guy. Yeah. I've gone with that tactic where you're basically imploring. This is the problem. Is is People aren't as smart as you. <laughs> so no. you say something that leads people to go, oh, all right, I'm starting a fist fight without yeah, knowing yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. Someone's going to go, you put that fucking phone away, motherfucker, or I'll crush your yeah. skull. Last night, uh, the Huntsville lady, where uh, she was front row, and she was pretty pickled off of her frozen fucking pina colada drinks. And then I said something that... M- triggered some synapse where she needed to share with me and i just instinctively put the microphone in front of her face and she went on some heartfelt diatribe of something and it was she's just and i and and then but people are (laughs) shouting her down don't shut the fuck up i go no no i'm just giving her a second she, I go. She's a little drunk. We were. She. It was one of those things where the TV. They have a TV in the green room, so you can watch the show. So these are front row center, a couple, and it probably don't get out much. You can tell. Oh, the guy. With the, the guy <laughs> they with saved the hat. up was a it lot. The guy of, with the hat. Yeah. The guy that they were sharing we were, a drink. We you were, were going to make the double straw for him. The malt shop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They. Uh, he. He had listened to the podcast. I'm pretty sure she'd never heard of you. And he had heard the podcast, and he asked who I was and how. And I said, Shaylee. He goes, what? He goes, how do you know Doug? And I'm like, well, maybe he's just tuned into the podcast or something. Because I don't expect people to know me. Yeah. But if they've heard the podcast or they've been to one of your shows before, they would know that I'm part of the of the group kind of thing. And so I think that was his first time being at a show. Uh, yeah, they seemed like, seemed like first it, right? time, like they've saved up to one day go to a show because <laughs> vacation is out of the question in the in the in the short term of the next twenty years with the amount of kids they have. But maybe one day we could save up to go to that one club that charges a thing. <laughs> well, I guess now we answered the question though of like who wants to sit in the front row at a comedy oh, show? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they probably were there, or, but the, were there the, the point was, yeah. afterwards, I, I I told the crowd to fucking leave her alone, and I go, she's a little pickled. We counted how many of these uh, pina coladas she had, froza, frozery, and she okay. goes, I don't usually drink. Like, <laughs> She shrank away from it like she was. I mean, it wasn't yeah, like in the nice. middle of a bit where she wanted attention. It just, you know, I get it. She just she had something on her mind because she was a little chatty during my set too, but not talking over me. Just if I had a beat where I paused, she would have something to say. But I don't remember what it was, but it was always very sweet, like something like. I think at one point she said, "No, you're doing fine. We're all just racist here in the South." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you 
should have gave her the mic. <laughs> yeah, no, it was something really. Stupid oh, that's like that. the guy that I didn't even hear. That was Chattanooga, where oh my, we're God. still guessing. I get some hate mail. We'll get into it in a second, but we we're thinking maybe that's the guy that I get the hate mail from in Chattanooga because someone yelled out during your show. Yeah, fuck well, black people or something. <laughs> well, what had happened was I was on stage and I was doing like so, a little bit of crowd work. I think about like uh, I was asking if everybody was going to drive home drunk and they were like, yeah. And then I was like, fuck the police. Right. And then everybody was like, yeah, fuck the police. And then I said something about like, as long as they're not killing any black people. Right, guys. And they were like, yeah. And then it got quiet. And he just went fuck black people and everybody went no like <laughs> no like uh, the visceral reaction from everyone was so like we all decided it in the same instant it was us against that guy and then you're d- talking about your special needs sister and he goes fuck that retard or something <laughs> yeah he said that and he was like doing that thing that passive aggressive like cackling demon laugh of contempt when you have But it was that line. sweaty guy with the fucking moon face and a suit or yeah. something. Yeah. Came up to the merch table like he had, he was planning a fucking yeah. manifesto to tell online. you. Yeah, he was just an un- unhappy camper from the moment the show started. He was shit faced. Oh, I, I, I got a, 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 a long email, which the more I thought about it, I tried to troll the guy a little bit, but I think he was wise to me. After that, because I I hadn't worked the comedy catch, the actual comedy club in Chattanooga since 2001. And I brought that up on stage talking to the owner. There's a bit of a backstory that we had. So I uh, and this guy sent me a hate mail the next day. The two hate mails I got from Chattanooga. No, one from Chattanooga. Oh, this one. Where he said that was uh, I've seen you in Chattanooga since 2001, and every time you come to Atlanta, where it, your shows, and I've never seen less effort put into a show, and I'm never gonna talk you up again, and you shouldn't be rude to your fans. After the show, there wasn't a lot of people there, and the ones that were there fake laughing. You should pay them it was obvious because he kept mentioning after the show like he's a guy i didn't want to hang out with like say hey let's go to a bar i don't i don't remember anyone after that fucking show i was talking to kid dave miller who i haven't seen since fucking 1994 or something i don't remember you being rude after the show at all and it's usually me who is like (laughs) all right guys hey thanks a lot and i try and move them along but they can being drunk they interpret that as somehow they're being slighted because they don't get this total FaceTime with you. And I, I don't understand that because they see how many people. Are I waiting. drove all the way from Atlanta. Well, people drive from, from Bisbee. Farther. Yeah. It's we don't way further. All night. I'll tell you what, that guy you're talking about, the moon face guy that was he was kind of leaning Tower of Pisa, you know, at the merch booth. That's and why I thought it might be him. But this guy was nope, there with nope. his wife. Yeah, this guy was with his oh, was wife. He? Yeah. So, oh, good. I'm no, glad. no, the guy was there with his dots. Yeah. So tra- he's standing at the merch booth. You're still down by the train car somewhere. You're not over there at the merch booth yet. Another one out on the sidewalk, right? So Tracy's like, that's the guy right there. And I'm all just... So Tracy's like, I'm not selling to him. I'm going to send him away. I go, come on, just relax. Oh, good. Let's. Uh, and I go, you can't do that because let, we'll take his money. But Let's assume it's that guy then. It is. Well, because no. in the email when he said laughing at all the wrong things, is that what he said about the crowd? He said, no, no. He said they were fake laughing. Fake like He was fake laughing. <laughs> That's what was bothering me more. I, I, I shut that guy down at one point. I go, hey, get with peer pressure and stop laughing at my jokes because no one else is. <laughs> no, so, he had the most contemptuous, like, ha ha, I'm laughing at the wrong part laugh. It was, <clears throat> it was so disturbing. Well, Tracy got the last laugh because as I go to find Doug to bring him over to the merch booth and he comes up and goes, when's Doug coming out to sign? And Tracy said, in about an hour, he'll be back. Uh, oh, that's why. <laughs> he fucking why, took off. Why are you so rude to your fans after the show? Because he went Who's back that and there's fucking no one, guy? There's no one I want I want I want to dox you and give out your fucking email. <laughs> I thought that was great, though, because he was cross-eyed drunk. Yeah. Leaning. Oh, man, yeah. Like, stutter stepping, and there, there was no reason. It would have just been a weirdness thing. Good. All right. So, that, that mystery solved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. 
I it had to have been that. Guy. I'll just give you a, so a f- fake name, John Smith. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, we started talking about things you signed no no I'm going to the second hate mail which oh, okay. was uh, the fact that he said the, the least effort I've ever seen anyone put into a performance I wasn't in the greatest mood which night was this Chattanooga, Chattanooga that Chattanooga. guy but the next night in Nashville which was a fucking blowout show. Someone fucking sent me an email. I wasted $250. I grew up watching Lenny Bruce and George Carlin and Rodney Dangerfield, and I expected new comedy. And 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 then it uh, then it, it trailed off into, and I had a perfectly placed comment, and as soon as I said it, they told me to shut up. <laughs> He must have written it drunk, but again, it's it's not about because that fucking show Nashville. That was a great show. That was fantastic. Everything about that show. And I I did do too much shit off the new special, <laughs> which made me paranoid. Yeah, last time you can see it live. Well, I, I I did fall into a lot of it, but if there was one that I put the least effort into, it was that one. That's why I did three bits off the new special because it's not out yet. And if you, unless you were in Vegas to see it performed, I haven't been in Nashville for fucking years. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, whatever it was, yeah, he got told to shut up. Both of those guys. In fact, that guy did. Chattanooga guy got Alfano, the owner, came over and told yeah. him to shut up. And I said something about, hey, he's the only guy laughing or something. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, the hate mail is usually routed somewhere other than because Nashville. Yeah, I didn't put a lot of effort in there. I, I went a little bit uh, autopilot, uh, but the crowd was so fucking good. They were hot. And well, I and I we spent the day with fucking Bird Cloud. So yeah, I, I didn't have a lot of notes in front of me when Mackenzie's hanging around. But I'm, sometimes those are the best shows, though, is when we're just relaxed and we don't put a fucking stress set together and try to remember everything. That fucking crowd was out of control. Yeah, good. Amazing. They always are at Nashville. And I've had a lot of shows where we hung out with Bird Cloud. Bird Cloud has a story, but it's not mine to tell. I almost got her drunk enough to uh, to do a podcast, but I, I I didn't want to do that to her. Yeah, we were close. <laughs> I don't. That would have been one of those things where I'd have to not put it out. So yeah, to hear it. Oh no, I told her. I said talk. if you, if you do it, there's no. I'm not going to take any. You know, fucking the old thing of the uh, 24 hour no, regret. No. But uh, she was there with, uh, she's been uh, tour managing this guy that you had just downloaded. Yeah, I found, well, I found his album on Spotify. And it's like, it's before old. You, before McKenzie, before, I, before we got to Nashville, you had been listening to this guy on tour. Yeah, yeah, I had yeah. been. It was like on my sort of like pump me up before a show playlist because it's like blues. And there's like he said, there's a lot of like Cajun influences. And oh, all this totally. Yeah, it sounds like fantastic. fucking Robert Johnson fucking cross down at the crossroads. Yeah. yeah. And I so and his album cover is him with the like skull face paint on. And so and, <laughs> until we got to Nashville. I thought that I was listening to a black man in the 1940s. <laughs> I had no idea that he was white and alive. Until and Australian. <laughs> from and Australia. Australian. And, until... and she just got done almost mirroring our tour. They were in a bunch of the same towns, but not at the same time. They just got weeks. done with six weeks. And so he came to the show and he he talked. I, I, I remember being drunk saying, you talk like a didgeridoo. <laughs> He had this weird voice, and like he sounded sometimes Icelandic, and he uh, very Tracy muted. Tracy thought he was Creole. Mm-hmm. Thought he was from Louisiana, mm-hmm. just like down swamp where you can't. Yeah, really hear yeah, yeah, can't you know, it. yeah. I, I try to get him to make full sentences because otherwise he's just kind of chirping. Yeah, <laughs> oh, he was so sweet. I loved him. Yeah, he's his name is C W Stone King. Did we say his name yet? No. No, no, C.W. Stone King. Fantastic. He's got a couple albums out, and uh, the one you're talking about, I suggest, if you're going to listen to it, go on uh, iTunes, download uh, Gone Boogaloo, 
which is the one with the the painted skull on his face. Yeah, he. So I mean, good. it's an old timey photo. Like you, like you dress up in the thing, and they they make it look like you're back in the saloon days. Oh yeah, no, I mean, totally. it's an old scratchy photo. So I can see where you think like, ah, this guy. We, yeah. we lost a good one with this guy. No, back that's in what the I was 40s. I, I, I thought I was listening to some like like old black guy I'd never heard of before. Yeah. It made me so happy. I, I mean, said that in the car today. I, I go, this guy is so authentic sounding. That I kind of feel ashamed, like I just watched a minstrel show and enjoyed it. <laughs> it's, it's almost to a place where I understand cultural appropriation, because yeah, that's way too fucking on the nose. Well, the, the night after after that show, I downloaded the album to listen to it, and I'm like, wow, man, the whole time he was talking, you know, when everyone was talking after the show, I couldn't understand what he was saying. I was like, he should sing when he talks. Because yeah, he could, when you hear him sing, it's like, who, who was the, uh, not Merle Haggard, but the one that stuttered. Mel Tillis. Mel Tillis. Yeah, he didn't stutter when he sang, but yeah. uh, 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 otherwise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, that was great, man. It was nice to see McKenzie, too. And, and yeah. fuck it today. I get a, a, a bingo calls me and says, hey, uh, she got a call from Dana, who runs the quarry in Bisbee. Saying, hey, um, Lucinda Williams is a huge fan of yours and she wants you to come by her penthouse for cocktails tonight. And I go, well, where is she? And Bingo says, Nashville. I go, that's fucking two nights ago. (laughs) Wow, what a burn. Hopefully it was a lie. I'm just going to believe that it was a lie. (laughs) Uh, Nashville would be, I think one time we did Nashville at Zany's, we were there on an off night and then we did the show. And uh, it was two times ago, I think. And that was cool because we like, we got to go. There was a time that... Uh, with Ralphie? Balco. Oh, yeah, yeah, the time before that? Because I remember Bingo was with us. So that was a while ago. Yeah. And that that would be a place I'd like to spend a, an off day and actually do something. Just Another was- victim of my new phone. Chad Ryden. Sorry, I just turned my phone on today. Hey, can you sneak me into the Nashville show? Nah, not if you don't have the new number, which only the fucking not VIPs, but emergency only the Chaley's and the Pay- bingos payroll. and the fucking. <laughs> yeah. Is this business related? Because otherwise. Uh, yeah. that uh, uh, I don't know where you were going. No, you were talking about your hate mail. Uh, you have, uh, uh, oh yeah, uh, th- this is why I can't fucking check my email in the morning. Yeah, like if I just don't turn on my computer until I'm fucking stabilized, evening happy hour, <laughs> all day. Check them then. Then I write back. Hey, thanks for coming. I get a lot of great fucking Huntsville tweets and emails. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. In the morning, I don't appreciate shit. I shit all over this guy. I hope you you came back to the podcast. I, I, Douglet, I didn't talk about this. On it. I don't know. Someone said, "Hey, Douglet," and it's a fucking. He had he had sent something. I guess he's got some pending fucking court case, and he wanted some support or help. He goes, "Hey, Douglet," and I go, "I've never heard that before." Douglet, like piglet. It's kind of cute, and. uh then he said, I ignore it, of course, as if it's not pressing. I don't necessarily get back to you. But then he said two more. Me again, Douglet. And the way I'm reading it, the third time, <laughs> hey there, Douglet. It's like some, it, it, it sounded like a fucking bully going, yeah, really? Yeah. Is that what you're going to do, Douglet? Hey, Douglet. Hey, Douglet. <laughs> so yeah. I was just reading it like that because I'm in my morning hates. And uh, and then I just wrote him back some fuck you. You sound like some fucking punk bully. Fucking, I shit on him. And then he's like, oh, I fucking never met you and fuck you. Oh, so it wasn't? He wasn't being demeaning? No, he thought, it was, he th- thought he had a fucking cute name. Oh. He just came across as some fucking punk kid saying that. So I eventually apologized. I did the right thing. You added too much yeah. anger it's, I think it's your fault for emailing me in the morning, even if I haven't checked my emails for days. I don't know when you sent it, but I know I read it in the morning. I can understand, though, how by the third one you'd be like, is this guy fucking with me? Like, 
It's almost as annoying as someone who does the same fucking punchline three times in a row like Andy tends to do, where Andy will like stumble into a fucking and then make it a callback like 15 times to where it's not funny anymore. But this was like personal, like you're just like, I like Douglet. Now I'm going to get a million fucking emails. Hey, Douglet. Yeah. All right, I get it now. All right. Uh, if you're done with that, we can finish up. Well, with no, the, you the have shit some. You, signed. Well, you, you have some Huntsville stories, or maybe you already covered them. You said yes. Yeah, whatever oh, no. I said, oh, you're going to write yeah, that yeah, shit yeah, down, yeah, yeah. Kaylee. So we're going to forget. It's getting near. It's getting near setting up the merch out in the uh, outside. After the Huntsville show, we were going to do merch outside because yeah. there's no place to really do it. And I go to the back of the room by the soundboard. What's up? She wants a cocktail. She's looking oh. for glasses. Yeah, yeah. All right. If you want to wash that one out, you can use it. Are you sure? Yeah. He's drinking beer. Do you want to take a break and get everyone set up? Or All right. Let's go. take a break. Yeah, and then take we, a break. And then we can, uh, we can do a commercial. Yeah, it's uh, not a break for them. We're just going to be right we'll back. take a break. Uh, yeah. You, you, in fact, why don't you take a break? Even though we're going to, in one second, say, okay, we're back. But go, you get a cocktail, listener. You should always have a cocktail during this podcast. Let us hear your ice. <laughs> Please hold. <laughs> we're back. Did you get a cocktail? Yeah, we should have given you more time. <laughs> All right, so... uh Huntsville after the show. I don't even remember this. All I remember is going, write that down before we forget well, it. Um, during the show, what the, the security guard was there. Well, off duty cop, armed, was there. And yeah. uh, he, you off have, duty only to him, to anyone in the room. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. on fucking well, duty. Well, you know, he, he's, he's a servant of the, of the, of the community. I mean, yeah. if something goes down, he's there. So he. Uh, <laughs> You were fucking with him a little bit. It was fun. He was he was enjoying the show and stuff. And I see him in back with uh, the manager and this one guy wearing his, you know, his going out to a comedy show shorts and uh, <laughs> skater T-shirt. And, I mean, this guy, he's in his 30s easily, maybe a little you know, older. older. And uh, The patron, not the cop. Yeah. The cop and, was a black guy. You can't tell how old he is. And so I, I go over there and I go, oh, this guy's getting kicked out because they're like, well, no, we'll take. Care. I got a tab. It's like, oh, we'll take care of your tab right back here. So they're they're, they're checking him out, and uh, the cop is like standing there because I mean, come on, this is this is pretty petty shit, right? And so he's like, no, no. The guy tried to walk towards a wall to get out of there, right? The guy's all this way, this way, and so they get him out front, and then now Trace and I are out there, and he's just sitting there, and he's he's fine, but he's waiting for an Uber or whatever, right? And he comes over and goes, how's your night going? I go, pretty good. How are you doing? He's like, all right. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I'm out here, though. I go, what, what do you mean? Because, uh, yeah, they just they kicked me out. I go, well, why? He goes, I really don't know. I go, all right. Level with me, dude. You're out. You're not. There's, dude, you can't appeal to me. I'm not. I can't get you back in. Just tell me the truth. What happened? He goes, I honestly think they singled me out and they just kicked me out. I go, that's, that doesn't work as a business plan. <laughs> what the fuck, right? One and, guy each show. <laughs> one guy each show, Tracy says. And he really was like, I, he, I could see in his eyes, he has no fucking idea why they kicked him out. Formally escorted him out of there. And then after, right after that, this long-haired tall dude not the guy with the stuffed animal but another guy oh, like thank god yeah. that guy didn't fucking come to i saw him at the merge booth you warned me go ahead yeah so this guy comes out and he's fucking he's on edge like what, uh, oh fine okay what did you say tracy said i'm fine it's fine. I'm, it's I'm fine. fine it's fine it's fine it's, it's fine. fine and then the gal that's with him is like just the, the trying to it's, uh, i said i'd take you here and i'll take you home but you don't need to act like this kind of thing you know and she's like just settle down he goes fine fine and i'm like what the fuck so the, that's the second guy that get kicked out and i don't i don't know why and he was going yeah that fine fine no that's fine this is the last time last time and this is all happening outside <clears throat> right there's no way to get back in and he said uh yeah, I don't even fucking care. He can shoot me in the fucking head. I don't even care. And I told Olivia, I go, yeah, 
die for comedy, right? You're gonna die for you want to go. You want is this go the Thursday you're gonna <laughs> the the hill you're gonna, the hill die, you're on? gonna die on? <laughs> And finally, they they end up leaving. But he was doing this thing, like like showing like the girl that was going to drive him and settle this whole thing, taking him home, like doing the finger gun, gun in his, in his mouth. mouth. <laughs> I'm like, what a fucking tool! How did he even get in there, right? Listen, Huntsville is uh, evidently known for some smart shit, like the space center and rocket ships and yeah. shit, but. Watching people leave at the end of the night, it's Alabama as fuck. Yeah. People in the most broke down cars, fucking pickup trucks like a nineteen fucking eighty eight with the, the Chevy Love. Yeah, the the the, the bed is kind of half leaning oh, yeah. off the frame and then squealing their fucking tires. Was, so when we got back in, I found the manager and I said, "You got to tell me." The there was a, a guy that got kicked out. He goes, Well, there was two. And I go, Okay, the first one, the shorter guy with the skater shirt, I go, uh, he has no idea why he was kicked out and left outside to, to wait for his Uber. And he goes, Oh, the guy who was whistling during the show? <laughs> <laughs> and I what? He goes, He was in the back row and he was whistling. And finally someone alerted the the, the 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 staff and they go you can't and he just kept whistling so they kicked him out and it's like that's fucking drunk he was so drunk he was either laughing and, and making a whistle noise which come on that wasn't it he was whistling I, re I remember this now because on the drive home when I'm talking to you now Tom Kanopka I don't have to call you I just talked to you on the podcast yeah it came up as the Tom Kanopka theremin whistle <laughs> I wish I could do Tom Kanopka's whistle but it goes through you like fucking like uh, like aluminum foil on a filling <laughs> but it's not appropriate during a comedy show it's not Battles your nervous system, but was it okay? Was it the sleeping guy no, last night? Then, then, I'm satisfied with that. I'm like, sure, that guy was drunk enough that he could have been whistling fucking a musical and not know it, right? So then I go, what about the other guy? Oh, that guy? Yeah, a bunch of the staff came over and said, "There's a guy nodding off." I'm like, well, being that drunk, you should have sat him with bored. the meth guy. <laughs> But being that drunk or that bored at a comedy show, get the fuck out. He actually, one guy said his head was on the table, and that is, it. it like, That's not boredom. No, I, I, was, I, was, I was a joke. <laughs> I'm saying, as a, as a, let, let's do a little PSA here. If you are caught sleeping in a bar, you should be anywhere but in that bar. It's fucking highly illegal house. for a you bar should. to let you sleep in first, a bar. First thing that they'll do is go, well, are you over serving? You know, what the why is this guy fucking passed out in your bar? So, yeah, he and that was the guy who just was going crazy outside with like, God, shoot me in the head. It's like just because you didn't get a straight eight the night before. Don't don't fucking push a cop to uh, to uh, you. You were uh, resisting arrest. I mean, come on. And he was he was pissed off all the way to the car where she was having to calm him down. It just didn't seem like that was. And both of those things happened without you knowing anything was happening in the showroom mm. because they had a guy that took care of the situation immediately and got him the fuck out of the room. There's been a lot of nights on this tour where shit has happened that I'm not aware of. And it's not like we're in a fucking arena. <laughs> I, I, my hearing's not good. And I'm, you know. I have tiny fucking ears and I'm not paying attention to the back of the room. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I don't notice a lot of this shit. Hmm. Well, I mean, the but fucking you know cop, the, the... but the cop being in the room, it, it answered the, the question. I, that Trace and I were, were talking to about it after the first night in uh, Nashville of like, how effective is that to have, you know, a metal detector outside your bar that kind of sends a message to everyone walking through the metal detector. Maybe we should go drink somewhere else. Yeah. I, yeah. And the cop being there, I think it's less about the fact that he's armed and more about he knows how to handle the situation and he gets a little an amount of respect that if I go up to you, I shine the light in your face so you don't see how small I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can get away with it if I'm looming over you and go, Tur, turn off that phone. Yeah. But I think that that is one of those things where it, that you don't see that happening and it's not because it's far away or something like that. It's handled professionally and discreetly. But there's other nights where there's 
the in fucking what was a uh, it was a uh, funny bone in Charlotte. Was it Charlotte? The mall? Uh, no, no, no. Which... Raleigh. Raleigh. Yeah. No, no. No, no, no. Guys, Charlotte on. is a comedy zone. Syracuse? No, no it was uh... a. <laughs> Any one of the many funny was bones? The, there's put, a big mall. The one in, they're all in a mall. It doesn't anyway, matter. It doesn't matter. But the, the, we had. Oh, oh it, was, uh, it was where uh, you move the guy from the front row to the back row. Raleigh. Oh, all right. wow. So, yeah, that yes. Guy. So we had another guy that was popping off the whole time. And every time I went in the room, I didn't see it. I'd come out and go, I don't know. It's like he was fucking with me. It's like taking your car to a fucking shop. Yeah. It makes it to tonka tonk sound. But when they nothing. try it, it doesn't do it. Your tires low, but I don't know. But I couldn't get the guy. But the guy was there. It was a problem. And no one fucking took care of it satisfactorily until the end of the night when the show was over. And I found out, oh, that was the guy I bought the beer for. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't hear him heckling in there because I was out chatting with him. In the bar while he was getting a beer, but it is one of those things where that doesn't happen in some of those rooms because there's someone that's taking care of it. The funny thing about Huntsville, and I, I said it a couple times on stage because, like I, like I'd point out one guy and the whole crowd laughed, and I go, "Does everyone know everyone <laughs> in this show?" Because it felt like that. Like, is this whole entire? Sorry to bring up the inbred thing about <laughs> Alabama, but are you f like an extended kinfolk? But uh, then after the show, after I waited a uh, professional courtesy till the guy that asked me to sign his meth bindle was gone, and then I knocked him out to the cop. I just because it's a funny story. You're right next to a cop, and you asked me to sign your meth. <laughs> And I, so I said that to the cop, and the cop turned on his heels, went away, then came back, and this girl who kept telling me how cute she was, so she got special privileges. She's uh, telling you how cute she is. Yeah. Well, how else are you supposed to know? Well, <laughs> but Doug's eyes work. <laughs> but the point is, she came back for like the eighth time at the end. Like, we're already wrapped up merch. Okay, we're done. I, I actually said that to the cop who's standing behind me during merch. And I go, I, I kind of want to tell him that we're past curfew and you're making me close down merch because I'm sick of doing this. And he goes, put it on me. I'll be the bad guy. That's what I get paid for. And uh, we didn't have to do that. But when we really were leaving, she came running over with one more poster that her friend didn't get signed. And I was about to do it. And he goes, no, it's over. You got to go. And I was not going to usurp his authority. Uh, and... Uh, so. Then he walked back in. He goes, no, she's with the dude that wanted you to sign her meth. And I'm like, oh, so everyone does know everyone here, especially the cops. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got to tell you, the, the merch booth, uh, Tracy runs the merch, and I try and just run us through the line as quick as possible. And I'll tell people that are listening, if you want something signed and we're doing merch, don't fucking lag, because as soon as I see that no one's at the merch booth. I have Tracy start packing it up and then that's the time's ticking for you to fucking leave cuz we we could be there all night and there'd still be someone waiting. Oh, are you are you closing up? Are you closing up? Sorry, I can't tell if I'm seeing a reflection. Yeah, it's Tracy. Don't worry. Oh. Uh, but it's one of those things where if you want to do it, get it. Get it early. Get it often. But don't don't lag. You won't have to worry about that on this tour because this will be going out while we're driving no, 14 straight hours back to Bisbee to deal with the Andy Andrus filming at the Funhouse debacle. Uh, that uh, I'm I, I'm looking forward to the product, but the fucking problems. Oh, so I had a question. Issues with Andy will be live in my house after a six-week tour and a 14-fucking-hour drive. I go right into real issues with Andy in your house <laughs> and his crew of fucking six. I have to ask you, is Andy doing... How much time is Andy doing that he's recording? I don't fucking know. Who knows? Andy doesn't know how much time he's doing when you say do 25 opening. He could do an hour. Just on a fucking regular gig. He could do nine. I thought he was recording 20 minutes. He's recording two different nights. 20 minutes. No. Okay, that's... What? 
He's recording a special. Like a whole thing. Okay. I have no idea. That's the first you I know, heard of it was when okay. we were recording last week. The, 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 he's going to record at whatever length of time he talks. Less editing. I don't know what he's doing with this. I don't know if it's for the documentary. I don't know. I have no idea. I just said, All yeah, right. you can film in the Funhouse. The best shows we've ever had without fail have been in the Funhouse. Yes, you can record here. I'll Did invite people. Best or drunkest? Bet we've had the fucking farts fest That's and all. Fun. Like every just Olivia Grace when she showed up for Thanksgiving, yes, fucking killed. And look at her today. Fucking Jeff Tate and uh, everyone go God, there and her? try it. <laughs> <laughs> Come by. Jeff Tate and the, uh, the girl he was Emma, 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 Emma Arnold. Arnold. Emma Arnold. Like uh, uh, oh, really, uh, uh, Olivia, you you came Jezel out with Nick the... Murphy. Yeah. But uh, Olivia came out the first time with uh, he's the yeah. Eric, yeah, Eric. Eric yeah, yeah, Freeman. Yeah, yeah, we've never had a bad show. Dude, if you have ten people in there, Castle Rock Kenny's off and on, but you well, know. he doesn't do the stand-up <laughs> comp. But every fucking comic we've put on stage, we just there's the best fucking yeah. audiences ever. It reminds me of the old uh, the old roasts before they were popular and and were public, where like no one is going to see it. The Back of the, Friars, yeah, Friars Friars roast, the old Friars roast. That you would, because it was always personal. Like Jesenak was cutting. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> was he was so, so fucking good, funny man. But yeah, I mean, it's always personal. It's about people in the room, and yeah, we're gonna try to beat them there because they show up the same day on the sixteenth. Late. Oh, is that why you want to leave right after? Fuck you. Yeah. No, not right after the show. San Antonio is gonna be a fucking gas. Jay White Cotton's gonna. Well, this will already have happened by the time you hear this. Tell me so I know what to expect. White Cotton's been added to the bill. He's come down from Austin. Oh, yep. And it's the last day of school. Those are always yeah. after a fucking tour like this. So uh, yeah, next time you see uh, me and Olivia and Chaley and Tracy will be those three nights in Florida. I think some of them are already sold out. But check. Yeah, uh, I haven't got word that they're sold out. So just go to DougStandup.com. Uh, yeah, tour Tam uh, Tampa. Uh, no, it's uh, Tampa, yeah, Tampa, Orlando, Orlando and, and West Palm. West Palm. Yeah. And uh, if it return. And then uh, Olivia won't be there, but we'll be in Hawaii in December, and that'll be fucking sweet. Bingo yeah, will be there. Not a day goes by, I don't think about and that. And New Year's Eve. I don't know if New Year's Eve is sold out yet. It's very close. But the plaza on New Year's Eve, I'm looking forward to that. All right. After that, there's other dates that have come out. Boston, I think Baltimore's out if you're on the mailing list. Get on the mailing list and uh, be there first. Seattle is coming out. We're adding all the, uh, yeah, all those places. You go, what the fuck? Did you forget about us? No. <laughs> no. We did the unremarkable tour first, and then we're building up to it. <laughs> <laughs> I should uh, yeah, well, you know what? Uh, right, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you afterwards, hold on, hold Jaylee. On. What? You have a surprise like, no, there's, for me? Well, no, there's bits. Uh, like, I, I keep thinking I should do some bits just for the podcast, or especially for Patreon people. Like the bits that are oh, just stage. burning on any given night about the town or the situation. I should be thinking, oh, all right, there's a fucking six minute chunk we can put on. You know, yeah, we'll talk about it. Well, then it'll just be after the music. And we also, yeah, we have a, well, we have a full night of drinking ahead of us on our last night off. We, we get to talk about, we talked about bonuses for Patreon people other than just that one extra podcast. We have some ideas. So, uh, yeah, oh, a we fucking might, buck we might a month. put that into play. Um, because I can I can contact them through the Patreon uh, interface, so I can I can put a message verify only, they are Patreon. No, it's yeah. it only goes to Patreon people. They can they're the only ones who can see it because they can log in, and we can do something for uh, one of the last shows for Patreon people that'll be at San Antonio. Good. Yeah. Do, right. do you want to? Oh wait, San Antonio is Tuesday though, isn't it? I can I can message them right oh, now. Oh, oh, Patreon. All right, yeah. all right. But that's the thing. When you're a subscriber, if I want to ask a question of the the listeners, I just do it, and that's why I I did a uh, I did some more emails, got some more questions from Patreon. And Olivia fucking killed it on this tour. So follow her. Uh, it's all of your social media is at your website. So yeah, yeah. Twitter's Olivia does bits. 
Twitter. Yeah, that's the one I use the most. All right. Yeah. But you go to your website. And, and my website. Well, yeah, I always put dates up and I'm planning some stuff. And I think me and Tom are talking about doing an Arizona run in the spring, like doing like Phoenix and Tucson. So that'll all be up on my website, oliviaisfunny.com. All right. Thank you for this tour. We still have four shows to go before uh, before you hear this, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. Downhill run, New Orleans, Lafayette, Houston, and San Antonio. Hope you were there. New Orleans sold out, which is uh, awesome because that's a that's a big room. You better fucking sell out well, New I'm Orleans. Just saying, I just got word. I understand out. if fucking Traverse City is a little it's light. It's like doing a convention <laughs> in Vegas. There's so much to do in New Orleans. That's why they've never had a full time comedy club. It's the only yep. city in my almost three decades that could never sustain a comedy club, but could could sustain professional sports teams. Yeah. The basketball, and they got the Saints, but fucking a funny bone goes under in four months. <laughs> <laughs> There's enough fun to be had. All right, uh, bingo. Bingo, you take us out of this. We only have one. We should get a million different versions of, okay, bye-bye now, because it fucking makes me laugh every goddamn day when I call her on the phone, and then I say it, and then you say it. But bingo... Give us the fucking beat. Okay, bye-bye now. <laughs>